Hello, lovely. According to an article found dated the 2nd of June 2011 of Christianity Today magazine, of 6.3 billion people in the world today, only about 33% are professing Christians. They belong to nearly 38,000 different church groups. Other sources claim there are about 2.1 billion Christians in the world. Um, <clears throat> that'd be about one third of the total population of the, the planet right now. It's probably higher because now, you know, it's several years later. Um, however, keep in mind what is included among the definition of real Christians. Um, it's not always agreed upon by many of these groups that are involved. I mean, there's a lot of false religions and organizations that have called themselves Christians, but they're not. For example, you've got the Jehovah Witnesses, the, the Mormons, you've got church leaders today that tell you, you don't have to believe in the virgin birth to be a Christian. Yeah, you do. You can't. <laughs> and, and, and the same people, they, will, they want to tell you that um, they want to disregard the entire Old Testament now. Stay away from churches like that. But I'm not here to question the sincerity of the believers, as most are probably very sincere about wanting to please God. However, do you think in all sincerity, how will the Lord God Almighty measure you if you don't obey His commandments? Like, if you don't forgive others, how can He forgive you? Check out Matthew 18. If He can't forgive you, how is He going to bless you, heal you, right? So, <clears throat> I, I mean, truly, many professing believers today in Christianity overall appear to have rejected much of God's instructions. Just as the early church um, moved in mighty, mighty signs and wonders, clearly history shows how quickly certain church leaders brought in a whole lot of pagan traditions and practices. For example, like, you know, you got the Christmas and Easter conflict today, which is a difficult thing to discuss in many churches because there's a Christian veneer covering over much of it. However, the Holy Scriptures and history show us that there, there, a lot of this stuff is simply rooted in paganism going back about 1700 years. It appears that the very name Easter, for example, has nothing to do with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Yeshua. It's derived from a pagan goddess named Ishtar. The Holy Scriptures clearly warn us about her. It's got lots and lots of stuff. If you dig in and read the Word of God, get in the Word of God, so the Word of God gets into you, right? You'll see this, right? Um, Christ and the Catholic Mass are also quite problematic, as well as what is unfolding in CERN and the reconstruction of Nimrod's head and, you know, the, the DNA. But I digress. Um, look, let me tell you this. Deuteronomy 12, 29. And the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself, that thou not be snared, don't be trapped, by the following them, after they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve these their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto the gods for even their sons and their daughters whom they burnt in the fire of their gods. That is talking about Molech, you know, kind of like the abortion clinics today. What things soever I command you observe to do it, thou shalt not add therefore nor diminish from it. So if you're following any of these practices, this can be hindering you from getting your prayers answered. And everybody wants to get their prayers answered. I mean, we're not to follow any form of uh, adultery, cultism. Now, think about it. We, we read uh, Philip. Philip went about his daily life. Signs and wonders confirmed him just as it will you. Since Philip was able to do this and greater things in the almighty name of Jesus, so will you. Obviously, healing and miracles were not mysterious to Philip. He's able to get the same sort of results that the Lord Jesus was getting and, and the original disciples got. You know, check out John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works shall these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, we read in, in places like Acts, um, Acts 8, 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with the palsy, 
that were lame were healed. Were healed. Hallelujah. They were healed. I believe this reveals an amazing insight for us as the New Testament church. I, as I've been sharing with you for ages here, you know, we're to cast all demons and, and, and heal the sick in the almighty name of Jesus. And how do we do this? It's part of sharing the gospel. And when you think about this really behind, you know, people that are lame and, and paralyzed, as many modern days examples of people miraculously healed from all sorts of things, including pelarises, when someone casts the spirit of infirmity out of them in the almighty name of Jesus. Now, the gospel appears to treat healing and deliverance from evil spirits without any real distinction. I mean, the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, the original 12 disciples, Stephen and Philip, all treated demons and sickness and disease pretty much the same. Because of this understanding, there was much rejoicing in the cities who experienced the work of the Lord Jesus and the disciples that came there. Now, look, if we want to see lives transformed, how are we going to proceed here? We read in Acts 8, um, 13, 8, Acts 8, 13. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued. He continued with Philip and wondered. Simon was a magician, and he had, you know, as a sorcery, he had all kinds of tricks up his sleeve. Now, if there's someone qualified to know if there's a hoax going on, being played out there, seeing all these healings and miracles happening, I imagine Simon would have been, you know, a good candidate to, to check it out. Yet clearly, he continues with Philip. And he must have given up his sorcery, his magic act, you know, all the, those occultic practices along the way. He walked out of occultism because he found the true way. He found it in Christ Jesus that we all need. And we read about Paul and Barnabas in Acts 14. Um, and, and it came to pass in Iconum that, that they went both together into the synagogues of the Jews and so spake. The great multitude, both the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. They were kind of like a political party, right? They, they stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So they went about, they spoke boldly about sharing the gospel, and the Lord granted signs, wonders, healings, and miracles, confirming them as he will for you today. In Acts 15, 12, it says, And then the multitudes kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. See, You see, God does miraculous signs and wonders through those who are moved in faith by his mercy, grace, and love, and move in boldness, sharing the gospel. Romans uh, 15, 18 tells us, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by the word of deed, though mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem and round about the Icarlium, I, I fully preached the gospel of Christ. So Paul's saying that you got to fully preach the gospel of Christ. Don't leave anything out. Just tell them the whole story. Experience the signs and wonders and healings. Don't just preach to get, you know, you're going to get to go to heaven at some time. I mean, salvation has a lot more to do than just getting to heaven while you're still here on earth. Because the power to heal and perform miracles is obviously not just limited to the original apostles or the early church. It didn't pass away. It's still here for you to tap into today. So when you think of the Lord, you know, gave us the gifts of the Holy Spirit for a good reason, right? The, the gift of healing and performing miracles is instructed in 1 Corinthians 12. So... You know, Hebrews um, 2 1 says, Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Don't, don't let what you have learned of the Lord, the truth, slip away in your memories. Um, you know, for the word spoken by angels was steadfast for every transgression and disobedience uh, received a just recompense of reward. The wages of sin is still death. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witnesses both with signs and wonders, with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. you got to fight back, overcomers. Fight back, overcomers. Trust the Lord your God. 
in Jesus' almighty name for everything, every detail, because all things are possible with God. So I pray right now that supernatural peace, healing, provision, protection cover you always with oceans of agape love in the almighty name of Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. If you need to know some more of this sort of thing, I've written extensively about it in my book, Unmasking the Future. Um, again, I want to thank all of you that have been um, writing um, such uh, encouraging comments, and especially about the new album, Revelation Rocker, Rockin' On. Okay, so um, if you like, join us 9.30 Eastern Standard Time at the Upper Room Fellowship dot org and we're, we're broadcasting spiritual encounters every week on deception detection radio at 7 p.m eastern standard time and if you've been blessed by this ministry consider sowing the gift of the lord you know if he, he moves on you go ahead to the upper room fellowship dot org and help us reach more people for the gospel's sake amen see you here there in the air